Bonjour, bonjour. Hello, everyone. We are 28th of November. I looked out of the window this morning and I saw the first snow of the year. Ah! Winter is coming. Christmas is coming. And as a gift in advance for you, I thought of making a video about how we made Cream of Hearts, the music film that was produced and directed by Victoria Jones and myself. I received some feedback from some of you and thank you so much for watching the film. I got lovely feedback about um, how the film moved them, uh, brought some questions in them about the aesthetic of the film and how intriguing it was. I also received some, some of your questions and I'm happy to answer these questions in this video. When I was a teenager, I used to have DVDs at home um, and I would buy the collector edition so I can watch the making of. Um, and it was always really interesting for me to, to see how the director communicate with the actors, the production team, listening to actors talking about their own characters. So although I don't have footages from um, like this behind the scenes, um, I'm really happy to talk about it. So I will go through a few explanations about the production, the pre-production and more about the story. Um, as I explain, as it goes, I will also go through the questions that I've been asked. Before I start, uh, I should also mention that there will be spoilers. So uh, if you've not watched the video, I'm going to put the link down below uh, in the description section so you can go there and you can come back if you want more details about the production. So a friend of mine um, asked me more details about my intentions as a director. So I'm, I include also Victoria Jones because we, we shaped the direction together. We're telling the story of Alice, inspired by Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. In this story, Alice has problem with integration being fully integrated in society by her friends from school. She avoids this issue by drawing and finding her way to this garden. And as she draws, she enters a dream world, the world of the queen, this world without sun, without moon, where the light comes from the queen and her music. So music is gonna attract Alice to the queen because she's the one playing the violin. And then we have this moment where the queen's prisoner, Faye, she breaks free. And as Alice has this sense of wonder in front of the queen, because the queen represents social recognition, um, power, talent, beauty. Um, the queen is at the center of everything. Her place is the one that Alice in her subconscious, that's what she wants. Um, and when the prisoner breaks free and attempt to overthrow the queen, and she managed, um, Alice is upset and she wants to take her revenge on Faye's prisoner. She fights against Faye. At the end of the fight, when she's about to win, the identity of the woman in black is revealed and it's herself. She sees herself in this woman who destroyed the queen and now Alice realized that the person she was fighting against was herself. After she realized that she has this kind of mad, mad scene, this, this moment of craziness where something in her is broken and she managed to go through this moment to face the queen she 
offer her hand to the queen who is in a very difficult position because she lost her power. The queen refuse, refuses and Alice decides to take the violin, symbol of the queen's power, to go back to reality. So um, this story has several layers of reading. It's full of Easter eggs, of little details that you can easily miss because it's, it's very compact. We tried not to let anything made randomly. That means that we really wanted small things, the small props that you can see on screen. They are there for a purpose. It's full of these kind of details that you take and you make your own interpretation. But I would say that what we wanted to do with Victoria is telling a story about power, self-acceptance and beauty. And I think we were both really aware that the young generation faces a particular issue um, when we have in our daily life so many distractions um, between phones, social media, etc. It's um, so easy to lose yourself and to believe that someone else can give you what you need, what you want. Um, Alice experience that she believes that this queen is going to give her a validation um, for her existence um, and ultimately she also she will become the queen through the queen's recognition and she loses herself by giving all her attention to the queen ultimately it's about finding our true self, finding how we want our existence to be defined by, and, and discovering that the answer will come from inside. There is a part of us that want to be expressed, um, hidden in the dark, with this very, very small voice intimate voice uh, that is so easy to push aside but it's actually by listening to listening to this voice recognizing the presence of this voice inside of us so for Alice it was face voice the prisoner's voice it's by that recognition that Alice find courage to recognize beauty and strength inside of herself. Um, again, there are many other interpretations that you can make about this film, especially for a work which is quite complex, quite compact. Um, I want you to make your own opinion and your own interpretation of the film. Actually, talking about the Queen and what the Queen represents for Alice. Uh, it gives me a nice transition to talk about her costume. Okay, big change here, I mean small change. I needed to plug my phone uh, to the charger because I thought I was still filming and then I realized that no battery! So the video was cut at the middle of what I was saying. Um, so coming back to my point, because I wanted to talk about the costume, the costume and more specifically the costume for the queen. So we had a costume designer, uh, Andrew Jesmis, uh, who was also a student at the conservatoire um, at that time. Um, and I showed him the drawings 
for Boo's face costume and the dress for the queen. Ta -da! The queen's dress. So we have um, this beautiful shiny red fabric. So it's Duchess satin, which shows it with um, Andrew. Um, he did an amazing job on this dress. Um, and I wanted to present also these little details here of the dress with this, it's like petals overlapping um, because we wanted to present um, the dress as if it was a rose, as if the queen was a rose in her own garden. For the sleeves, it's really light. And I remember when I was in the park playing the violin, um, the sleeves were dancing, moving with the wind. Um, it's really gorgeous and gives this kind of magic vibe to the dress. For the belt, we used a taffeta, if I remember well, a darker color, more like a bordeaux. I was inspired by John Tenniel's illustrations. Um, so he did the illustrations for Alice in Wonderland's The Book. And also the Queen uh, from Tim Burton's movie. And obviously both have similarities because I guess Tim Burton was inspired by Tenniel's drawings. Um, so they have both these massive heads, this large Victorian dresses. Um, so for the head, I envision this big, massive crown. I wanted to give you a bit of uh, close-ups on the crown because we don't see the crown so much in the movie. We see, uh, we see it on the queen's head, but not necessarily in details. And there are so many details on this crown. Um, yeah, it suffered a bit um, from the, my last removal. Um, it's a crown that I, I designed. I made this crown, um, and yeah, I really like the, the kind of details of these ruby-like um, decorations and some drops here, the branches going all around. It was a bit difficult also for this crown playing the violin with this crown because. My bow was literally going up into the branches of the crown. And so, yeah, I needed to be a bit careful about that. I also wanted to talk about a challenge that we had in relation with the location, with the shooting location. So at the end, we did a shooting um, in Pollock Country Park, a beautiful park in the south of Glasgow. This park is lovely. Um, there is a big mansion in the center of the park. There is this water stream crossing the park. with this nice bridge where you can see Alice crossing to uh, enter the garden. Very kind and peaceful Scottish cows eating the grass while looking at you uh, with their lazy eyes. And we found this particular spot, it's like a hill, and on the top you have this massive tree. So I don't know what happened with this tree, but it looks like a thunder literally cut the tree in two. Um, so this tree is at the top of the hill, and this is where we put some ribbons and this tree effectively represents the throne of the queen. Um, but originally, this was not supposed to be our shooting set, our shooting location. It was totally uh, unexpected. This film was a student project, so um, we could have access to the costumes, the props, and the studios from the at the conservatoire. Um, so we arranged everything, the costumes for Alice, 
the props, so the throne, uh, and we wanted to shoot it in a black studio, like with a black wall, black floor, um, and we imagined something quite abstract, like a um, chessboard floor made with papers, white papers on the floor. It was supposed to be all inside, but a few days before the beginning of the shooting, when Victoria and I contacted the head of the costume department, um, so the person in charge of the store um, where all the props and costumes are stored, um, she went on our annual leave, so she was not there anymore and we had no way to contact her. When she was away, we couldn't have access. Um, we couldn't have access to the costumes and the props. Well done. Totally unexpected. We were devastated. Um, we were thinking of postponing the shooting, but postponing the shooting was really tricky because Victoria had to come back to the US. It was not sure that she would come back to Scotland in the next few months. So I said to Vicky, you know what, we are gonna do it. But outside, we're gonna do it in Pollock Country Park. There is this lovely broken tree on the top of the hill. It's gonna be our throne and everything is gonna happen in the Queen's garden. Vicky had some doubt at the, at the beginning because it was a big shift and we needed to uh, rework on the script to um, make sure that it works, what we, what we envisioned for an interior environment worked for outside. And it did! <laughs> at the end we were really lucky because I don't think we would have done, we would have had the same sense of we would have not have we would have not had we would have not had would have we would have not had <laughs> this sense of beauty if it was inside at the end it works much much better in in the garden in this park we had two days of shit weather rain gray clouds cold I was freezing in the costume for the for face face costume. Uh, she has this very see-through light um, fabric on her. I was freezing the second day. Um, third day, the third day was dedicated to the queen. The queen emerging on the top of the hill, and we had such a bright day the sun was there it was just a perfect day for the colors and the light in scotland when when the sun is out is wow it's there is this beautiful colors emerging and it's just poetic and beautiful bonjour tout le monde hello everyone today is sunday again yes because i left you for me last week, uh, so for you it's probably the same day, uh, and because yeah, no battery on my phone, the light was just blah 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 blah, so uh, I decided to just stop shooting and to wait for the Sunday, the next Sunday. Uh, so today is the 5th of December, new hairstyle, and yeah, I'm just going to keep on going with my little crispy explanations about making Queen of Hearts, the music feel. Someone asked me about training for the fight scenes. Um, I really like these scenes. It's, um, it was quite a challenge because we also needed to create a choreography which is related to the music, so strengthening the beat and at the same time giving this sense of emergency and and threat coming from both characters so Alice and Faye the prisoner so we were inspired by some Kung Fu movies Asian movies um, but also 
one moving particular, which is Matrix. My dad um, showed us the movie when we were teen teenagers. Uh, and uh, and I loved especially the first one. So all the, the fights between uh, Neo and Morpheus or Neo and the agent Smith and Victoria um, was also uh, into it. So for the fight, we worked with a Tai Chi instructor, uh, Malcolm Pollock, who was a fight choreographer consultant. Uh, so he came uh, once to show us some movement and some principles of uh, Tai Chi. Um, we worked also with Leonor Estrada, who was our choreographer, fight choreographer. She did a great job with infusing this Tai Chi movement um, into the choreography and making sure that it's, it's a fight but it's a beautiful fight. It's responding. It's um, there is some kind of elegance in the movement um, that we wanted um, because at the end it's a film about um, power, yes, but also beauty, a sense of beauty. Um, so the aesthetic was also important for the fight. So there are two fight scenes. One when face a prisoner. Um, wants to get free of her, the ribbons around her wrist. When I performed this character, I had uh, ribbons on both wrists with someone on my left and someone on my right um, holding the ribbons. Um, and so I had to play with the tensions in the ribbons, um, playing with the different levels. And for that particular scene, uh, it was more um, in improvised uh, choreography. The second fight scene is uh, with Alice, so between Faye and Alice. Alice played by Eleanor Larson. Um, and for that one, we wanted to keep, um, to be really um, accurate with the beats, um, so with the music. Uh, so the choreography was set. We. We repeated, repeated, repeated. Um, Leonor made us work on detail so that we create this smooth um, interactions between us. Originally, um, I drew a storyboard and the fight scene was in the storyboard and we kind of like followed quite well the storyboard in the sense of seeing the ribbons being pulled, seeing each character responding to what the other character is doing in terms of movement and action. We had an acting training with Akuch Paul. Um, she practiced with us, Eleanor, who played Alice, and myself um, as I played uh, the Queen and the Queen's prisoner, Faith. I really liked working with Akuch. Um, she led us to uh, question or character to envision who they are in different contexts, uh, what they want, what is the physicality of these characters, um, how they interact between each other, um, and for me, what is what is the relationship between the prisoner and the queen, um, which are the the two opposites, uh, where the queen is the sun the glamour, the, the, the tada, uh, the extravagance, and Faye, who is more this humble presence, all in black. And she has this blindfold that um, prevent her from being trapped by illusions. So it was really interesting for me working on these two characters, working with Akuch and Eleanor uh, on our characters. Um, but it was also really challenging um, and I, I say that also in relation to a question that um, someone asked me about how it is in my head dealing with so many different things composing the music directing performing um, and creating the story one of the main difficulties that I had as um, jungling with so many roles was um, 
keeping my character, embodying the character when I'm not the director and really making a distinction between both. Um, they, are, they are linked, they are uh, related. Um, understanding the character as a director helped me also to understand the characters when I am an actor. Um, but on, on the present moment when I'm acting, I am not the director. Uh, it's making clear the distinction between both roles. Um, and I think this was really, I felt like, uh, you know, this octopus doing many things at the same time, um, but understanding that it's not exactly at the same time, it's one thing at a time. Um, that was something. <laughs> I come back to something that I said last week. I mean, the same, in the same video, but earlier in the video, so, um, because I was talking about Alice being um, attracted by the power that the Queen represents. And a friend of mine told me, hmm, I would have thought that it would be the case for the, the girls at the very beginning of the, of the film when the girls kind of like ignore Alice and make the girls make her feel like she doesn't belong to their group. And so my friend said, when I see Alice, I feel she's more independent and because she has this creative world and she um, she's not necessarily looking for it. And I felt it's interesting because this film is about appearances and about going beyond um, what you think you you see, um, what you believe is reality. Um, and Alice has definitely this kind of secret garden. Um, she looks innocent. She looks like um, she has no bad intention. But who really knows what is in the secret of her heart, um, yes, Alice has a certain innocence, a certain independence of mind. I would also say that even Alice can be tempted by power, beauty, and it's, um, it's inside of her, this looking for her place in the world. Um, and I think ultimately we're all looking for that in our lives. Um, I got lovely comments on the music. Um, thank you so much because this music was so <laughs> intense to create. Um, I, I had um, the support of Robbie Kuhn. He was a sound engineer for that project and he helped me to shape the, the sound. Um, he recorded the violins, different layers of violin. Um, it was quite um, an epic journey because at the beginning when I started composing the music, I, I, was, not, I, was, I was not sure of the results. Um, and uh, this way of composing was also quite new infusing digital sounds. Um, it was hard work. I mean, the whole film was hard work. Um, but for the music, uh, it was... The music was at the center of the whole uh, filmmaking process with the poem. Uh, and so the music needed to be really strong um, and compelling and to have this kind of narrative structure um, that makes sure that we're gonna make a film which which tells a story with this kind of, we go somewhere, um, then it finishes, and we go somewhere else, and then it finishes, and then somewhere else. So uh, when I started creating the music, um, I was not exactly sure where, where I was going. It started bit by bit when I was doing it, 
okay, this is where I'm going. Even if I had the support of the poem, it took me some time before f feeling the confidence in the, in the, in the composition. Usually, uh, for films, what is done most of the time is first the story, shooting the film, and then the music coming after as a support of what's going on um, with the story. But in this creative process, it was the music first, then building the script uh, and shooting. Uh, a bit, it's similar as Fantasia 2000 by the Disney Studios um, when they took some uh, classical pieces, famous classical pieces, to create short stories. So the music already written and building a script based on the music. The thing also with the music in Queen of Hearts is that it's like a force character. So you have the Queen, the prisoner, Alice, but you have also this presence always there. Um, the music can be associated with the Queen, but more broadly, because obviously the, the Queen plays the violin. The music bewitches Alice, um, and you feel like the, 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 the music fuels the, all the action at the end when there, there are this fight, the mad scene, and then this, this ending with Alice uh, revealing her strengths and going back to her world. Um, more broadly, I would say that the, the music is, is kind of like uh, the storyteller. The same way there is this voice saying the poem, the, the music is also telling you what's going on. I really enjoy this creative process because um, I learned a lot about the power of music. Music as a support to tell a story but also as a driven force um, that leads the story. So this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, for me it was a pleasure to share this behind the scenes, uh, these few explanations. And um, if you have more questions, feel free to ask me and there is the comment section below or I have an artist page on Facebook so you can reach me there. There are so many things that I could have said about the cinematography, the editing process, but well, I try to um, reduce a bit the scope. I wish you an amazing Christmas in these strange times. Um, there is still room for joy and sharing. And yeah, I see you for our next video. Take care. Au revoir.